LZR Flat Scan SW. It's a single curtain, standalone, door mounted safety sensor for automatic full energy and or low energy swing doors. It was first launched August 2018. LZR Flat Scan SW, standalone door mounted sensor system. It's a single curtain or single plane of laser technology, TOF or time of flight. That's a common industry term for laser time of flight. There are 170 spots across 106 degrees shown on the left with the red and green. 70 spots across the 90 degree red area and that equates to about a spot every inch and a quarter and then 100 spots across the 16 degree green area that equates to a spot about every eighth of an inch we also term this finger detection technology it's a quick installation and setup there is no hub or door position switch you make a simple hand gesture or hand swipe to define the detection field width and the handheld remote is usually not required. Laser technology shown with the icon at the top of the screen, some of the applications that it's used for, swing doors, low energy doors, revolving doors, sliding doors, automated windows. It's also used outside of the pedestrian power operated door industry utilized for automatic gates, high speed roll up, high speed fabric doors, industrial door types. Functionality, here's some examples showing the location and functionality of the flat scan. The bottom of the screen showing an overhead plan view of a pair of swing doors. The black rectangles represent the location or mounting location of the sensors. The green area will be the reactivation portion. The red area will be the safety, stop, or stall function. Notice the green area around the pivot area. That's for the finger detection or pinch zone area detection. If a hand or object gets in that area, the door will reactivate. It will not close, thus preventing finger pinching. NC156.10 power operated pedestrian doors. Here's a copy paste of the standard for section 8223 door mounted sensor system. This basically describes the 5, 5, and 1 rule you may have heard of where a sensor shall detect within 5 inches from the face of the door for the width of the door less 5 inches from the pivot and to within one inch to the leading edge. The flat scan exceeds this portion of the standard as it covers more of the area as described in 8223. Components. Number one is the cover. Number two is the push button, the teach in or the setup button. Three, it's the dip switch or bank of four dip switches we'll explain later four the master slave connector or pass-through cable connector five is the main connector six is the angle adjustment screw seven eight nine and ten are all part of the door loop eleven is the lock screw for the sensor angle adjustment twelve is the laser head thirteen is the laser window 14 is the laser window protector. 15, positioning tabs used for mounting. 16 is the mounting base. 17 is the master slave cable. And 18 is the power cable. LEDs. Red is relay one. That's the stop or stall function. Green is for reactivation and that's relay two. Orange or amber indicates an error and particularly the number of orange or amber LED flashes indicates the type of error which is described in the back of the instruction manual.
Flashing red, green, red, green indicates a learn is in process. Additional indications for other LED flashes for red and green. Mounting. Full energy applications require two sensors, one on each side of each door. Low energy applications may only use one sensor on the approach side. Shown at the top, showing the mounting location in the upper corner of the pivot area of the door on each side of the door leaf. At step one below, slide the mounting base off of the sensor. Step two, use the mounting base and position it on the upper corner of the door near the pivot area using the alignment tabs. Continuing with mounting, when mounting the mounting base, ensure the sensor will not interfere with door movement. If the sensor isn't correctly positioned, it could be damaged during door opening or closing. Additionally, ensure the sensor isn't going to be interfering with any door hardware or operator hardware. Step 3. Mark the pilot hose on the door. You can also use the inner surface area of the mounting base to fasten the screws if you cannot use the mounting holes as shown in step three. Step four, drill the holes. Step five, cut the positioning tabs off the mounting base. Step six, fasten the screws. Step seven, drill a 5 16 pass through hole in, through the mounting base and door. Smooth out any rough edges. Step eight, pass the master slave pass through cable through the hole and then position the cable in the notch of the mounting base and secure. Step nine, remove the sensor cover by inserting your finger and then pull firmly towards you. Step 10, pass the cable through the hole on the back of the sensor and secure the sensor to the mounting base by sliding it downward. Continuing with mounting, step 11, connect the black plug to the black connector on the sensor. Step 12, ensure all wires are secured within the notch to avoid damage from the cover. That way you won't pinch the wire when you Fasten the cover onto the mounting base. Step 13, use a plug to close the slave sensor or use a plug to close the bottom of the sensor, the one that does not use a door loop. Step 14, secure the lock screws to avoid vibrations during door movement. Wiring, step one, Determine the appropriate length for the door loop. Cut the excess door loop. Step two, cut the excess door loop to avoid obstructions. That's very important. You want to have the door loop as short as possible. Step three, pass the power cable through the door loop and connect the white plug to the white connector. Ensure that the loop does not interfere with the sensor view. Step four, Create a loop with the wires of the power cable and pass them through the notch as indicated. Use the other part of the cable to block the wires. Step five, secure the door loop to the sensor using the clamp. Secure the two screws to avoid pulling out of the cable. Step six, tighten the other side of the door loop using the cable cap and pass through the remaining length of the power cable towards the door operator. Wiring. Step seven, cut the power cable to the right length, strip the eight wires and connect all wires as indicated below. Red and black are your power wires. Note that the power supply is 12 to 24 volts DC. That's DC only and that's a range between 12 and 24 volts DC. You cannot power the flat scan using AC voltage. Red is plus, black is minus. For the stop, or stall function, the red LED, use the blue and brown wire for the signal on relay one. For reopening impulse, the green LED, relay two, use the green and white wire. For tests or monitoring, use the purple wires. The blue, brown, and the green and white can be configured as normally open or normally closed. Set up. One of the first things you'll need to do is set the appropriate dip switch, dip switch one, for the correct sensor. The sensor that's going to be the stop or stall, dip switch one, needs to be in the up, and that is the default setting for stop 
or stall for the door. If you're adjusting or you're setting up the sensor on the approach or the reopen side, dip switch one needs to be down for the green LED. See on the uh, picture image on the right, the relay one, relay two configuration for safety and reactivation. Once you change the dip switch on the sensor, that sensor will blink orange. Press the push button, the setup button, the teach in button, all the same button. Press it for a long push, greater than three seconds, to confirm the settings. Once that's complete, you'll see a number of green flashes indicating the number of connected sensors. You'll either see one green or two greens because you'll install one or two sensors per door leaf. Teach in. This is actually harder to explain than actually do the teach in. But nevertheless, before launching a teach in, you want to ensure the following. Make sure the door is closed. Use the service mode if needed. You can see page eight of the instruction manual. Both relays are connected to the door control and the master slave cable is connected between the sensors. The detection fields are free of environmental obstructions, your tools, ladder, objects, and people. A laser window protector film is removed on each sensor. And then verify the relay output setting. See page 10 of the user's guide. That would be dip switch 1 and 2 appropriately. Dip switch 1 would be set up for safety. That's the default setting or down for reactivation. A teach-in on the master configures both the master and the slave sensors. A teach-in on the slave sensor only configures the slave. In case the master and slave are not aligned, the first launch a teach-in on the master and then on the slave. Step 1. Press the master sensor push button briefly. The LED will begin to quickly flash red, green, red, green, red, green. When installing the sensor on a pair of doors, repeat this on the second master sensor. Step two, when both sensors are flashing green, position yourself in front of the door and stretch out your arm in front of you as if you're gonna shake hands with the door. Make an up-down swiping motion at the leading edge of the door to mark the detection field width. The LED will flash red while calculating the width of the door leaves. Step three, when the sensor flashes green again, remove yourself from the detection field and cycle the door open to allow the sensor to learn their environment. The sensors will flash red during the closing of the door. Step four, once the door is completely closed again and the LED is off, the teach-in is complete. The graphic below is demonstrating the text above. Press the teach-in button. Step up to the door when it's flashing red, green, red, green. Make a swipe with your arm or hand. Stay back out of the zone and let it learn its environment. Adjustments. Check the correct positioning of the safety fields and the reopening fields by doing a walk test safety check according to the ANSI 156.10 standards. And if necessary, you can adjust the sensor tilt angle with a tilt angle screw. Adjusting the tilt angle screw from 2 to 10 degrees will move the detection field inward or outward away from the face of the door. You always want to launch a teach-in and test the correct positioning of the detection field after making adjustments to make sure the angle, the sensor position, or environment is correct. Verify the sensor correctly detects based upon the door speed setting. You may have to reduce the door speed if necessary to ensure the door stops, slows, or reverses according to the ANSI 156.10 standard. Finish. Apply the cover starting on the narrow side. Don't hesitate to push. Snap it on. To remove the cover, position the screwdriver in the notch and pull upwards until the cover loosens. Service mode. Service mode deactivates safety detection for 15 minutes and can be useful during an installation, a mechanical teach-in of the door, or maintenance work. To ensure service mode, push and hold the teach-in button on the sensor for at least three seconds. The LED will turn off. To exit service mode, push and hold the same button again for at least three seconds. The service mode is deactivated automatically when a teach-in is launched. Additional Handheld remote control information is on the right side. Using the remote control, press unlock, press the magic wand, press the relay button, and then lock. 
will set the service mode active. Dip switches, dip switches two, three, and four. Two for environment, by default, set to standard. If necessary, switch to critical when external disturbances are likely to cause unwanted detections, minimum object size or immunity, and the uncovered zone are increased. Dip switch three, output configuration, normally open or normally closed. Settings for this dip switch must be set on the master sensor, the sensor connected to the door control. Dip switch four, the pinch zone dip switch, on by default. Switch to off when the hinge area does not need to be secured or protected and objects can cause unwanted detections. Once you change a dip switch, according to the note below, you must press a long push on the push button to confirm the settings, greater than three seconds. Afterwards, the number of green flashes indicates the number of connected sensors, either one green or two green. Optional remote control settings. If you want to configure the detection field width or height, you can use a remote, press unlock, and if you want to adjust the detection field width, press the C button, and then press the number of inches you wish for the detection field to be. You must enter three numbers. By default, 155 inches is selected. Same for the height, and below if you want to set the pinch zone, you can do that using the A and B button. Again, you must enter three numbers, three digits, to set the detection field. If it's set to 16 inches, you would enter 016. Additional remote control settings, output configuration. This is where you can change the output from normally open to normally close, or normally close to normally open. Ensure dip switch three is set to on on the master sensor to modify the output configuration. Using the handheld remote, press unlock, and then the relay button, and then the number you wish to set the outputs for your application. Setting the immunity above or below the defaulted value of four, Use that to increase or filter out external disturbances, but you must know the reaction time of the sensor increases significantly when you increase the filter of the immunity between value five and nine. Remote control continued. Uncovered zone, dip switch two must be set to on to modify settings using the remote control. You may want to increase in case of environmental obstructions. Using the F2 button on the remote control, select the appropriate number pertaining to the value of the uncovered zone. The uncovered zone is the inactive area from the ground to the bottom of the detection zone. For example, the default 10 equals 10 inches of inactive area or where the sensor is not capable to detect at the floor upward 10 inches a 10 inch inactive area from the floor to the bottom of the detection field. These dimensions are measured in specific conditions and dependent on application and installation. Anti-masking and background. Anti-masking is a protective function which detects an unwanted object nearby the laser window masking the vision field, meaning an object or a person is right directly in front of the detection field, meaning that a person or object is directly in front of the face of the sensor. Background, reference point in the detection field of the sensor. If no background is present, switch to off. Remote control continued. Using the bottom right of the remote, the magic wand button, magic wand zero, performs a teach-in, magic wand 8 is a full reset of the sensor, and magic wand 9 is a partial reset where the factory reset occurs except all values for the field dimensions and the output configuration do not change. Detection area. The door leaf safety, the typical object size is 4 inches measured at 13 feet. The sensor detection area shown in the lower right is a radius of 13 feet. If you recall from the previous slide, the number of spots for this area, 70 spots. 
70 spots of laser detection equals 4 inch object size at 13 feet. The pinch zone safety, if we recall, 100 spots in this 16 degree area, the typical object size 3 quarters of an inch at 13 feet. Very, very high resolution. And then the gray area is the uncovered zone we spoke previously about. It's adjustable by the remote control and the factory value is four inches, meaning four inches of inactive area from the bottom of the detection field to the floor. Showing on the lower pictures are the safety zone and the pinch zone, as well as the radius 13 feet. Tech specs, technology is a laser scanner, time of flight measurement, detection mode is presence, it also detects motion as well. Maximum detection range, 13 foot radius. The opening angle for door leaf safety, 90 degrees, that's 70 spots. And then the 16 degree pinch zone safety area, 100 spots of resolution of the laser detection field. Minimum object size for the door leaf safety, 4 inches at 13 feet. The pinch zone safety, 3 quarters of an inch at 13 feet. Very high resolution in both instances. Supply voltage, 12 to 24 volts DC. You cannot power the sensor with AC voltage. And that's a range. It could be 14, 16, 18 volts DC. Low watt Power consumption, less than two watts. Response time, door leaf safety, maximum of 50 milliseconds. Very fast. Pinch zone safety, maximum 90 milliseconds. Still very fast. As an example, the human eye blinks in about 250 milliseconds. That's a quarter of a second. Test input, if using the tester monitoring signal, 30 volts DC max switching. The output, the relay outputs, maximum switch voltage, 42 VAC, VDC if you're switching current. LED signals on the sensor, red is swing side, safety, stall. Green is the approach or reactivation. Yellow or amber is the air LED. Dimensions, five and a half long by three and a third high by one inch deep or one inch thick, plus a mounting bracket if you use that. Material and color is a plastic resin. The color choices are black, aluminum, or white. Tilt angles, 2 to 10 degrees. Protection degree, IP54, where the first number equals dust ingress. The second number represents protection against vertical spraying water. Temperature range, minus 22 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit if powered. Part numbers. Full energy kits, black, white, silver, or aluminum. Low energy left kits and low energy right kits. The low energy kits would be a single sensor and then replacement left sensors or replacement right sensors. Comparison LZR flat scan compared to the LZR micro scan. LZR flat scan is a quick installation. There's fewer components, no hub, no door position switch. It uses an integrated mounting template. It's a quick setup, no hub to program, four dip switches, remote is not required. Make a hand gesture or hand swipe to set up the detection field. It's a single curtain and can be used on low energy applications. The LZR micro scan is feature rich a hub packed with functions, knowing act, push and go, monitoring logic, onboard troubleshooting and diagnostics. It utilizes four curtains equaling bodyguard functionality. And that's it. Contact info, customer service 800-523-2462 or email orders-us at beasensors.com. For technical support, 800-523-2462 or email info-us at beasensors.com.
Shown on the screen is the contact information for your state and or province.